Hi everyone, Rihanna Dignard here. Welcome to my channel and welcome back to my channel. And today we will be carrying on with our film photography science series. Today we're going to be talking about perhaps one of the most important things about film and that's its speed or its ISO. Speed or ISO refers to how sensitive the film is to light and controls all of the settings that you're going to use on your camera when you try to take a picture. If you look at a box of film, perhaps one of the most important things you'll see on it is its speed. So this Ilford HP5 Plus film is a 400 speed film. These two cool black and white films for filmography are an 8 ISO and a 13 ISO, super low sensitivity to light. And this purple film actually has a range it could be shot at from 100 ISO to 400 ISO. Now ISO and speed mean the same thing, but ISO actually stands for the International Organization Standard. And this is like a whole global kind of company that sets a lot of standards for things, including film speed, but even data security and quality management. Because a long time ago, people were coming up with their own standards for how sensitive film was to light. And this led to each country having their own measurement scale for determining this. So somebody had to come along and go, hey, we need to standardize this for the entire world because it's confusing out here. So now that we know a teensy bit about what film speed or ISO is, let's dive into the science behind what makes one film more sensitive than the other. Low speed or low ISO films are not very sensitive to light. So when you shoot them, you want to be doing conditions that have a lot of light around them, a bright sunny day or a lot of studio lights because there's plenty of light to go around that the film can pick up on it. However, if it's cloudy, overcast, dusk, nighttime even, or you're trying to pick up a fast moving object, use a higher ISO film because this has a lot more sensitivity to light and is going to really capitalize on what little light is in your system. One of the things you could change on a low sensitivity film versus a high sensitivity film has to do with the size of the silver crystals. So remember our silver halide crystals and we have our halogens located in this column of the periodic table and our silver is located right there on the periodic table are what's responsible for forming our photographic image when they get exposed to light and then are developed. So if you make the silver halide crystals on a photographic film bigger, then they're going to be able to capture light easier, creating a more light sensitive film. However, because of this, because they're bigger, it's also going to result in a greater image. So higher ISO or higher speed films with more sensitive to light and bigger silver grains are going to result in a grainier image after development. In addition to the silver halide crystal grain size in film, the crystalline structure of the silver halides can affect sensitivity as well. Most films use actually what is called the tabular crystal structure of silver halide, which in comparison to other crystal structures has a lot more surface area. Having a larger surface area means there is a larger surface at which to collect the light incoming, therefore increasing sensitivity. So you don't need more silver with a smaller surface area. Now you can use a less amount of silver with a larger surface area and still capture the same amount of light. Finally, in addition to changing the grain size and the grain shape, you can also add in additional sensitizing chemicals. These are chemicals that will also be light absorbing, gather energy from the light and transfer it over to the silver halide crystals on the film, thus making them more sensitive to light than they would be on their own. Color film already does this to a certain extent by having different dyes that sensitize each layer to red, green, and blue light. You can also take a small grain of silver, surround it with a sensitizing dye, and get the same light sensitivity as you would with just having a larger grain of silver. So this is kind of a way to get around the fact that higher ISO films have typically a more grainier final image, because if you use sensitizing dyes, you could keep the silver grain small, but still have a higher sensitivity because you've just helped out the silver a little bit more. Pretty cool, right? Thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about film sensitivity to light, aka ISO or speed. I had a lot of fun researching this as always and learning that just simple changes in grain size, shape, and even adding in some helping chemicals all create vastly different films that you can shoot with your camera. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. Today's fun fact we're going to rate in the comments on a scale of 1 to 10 is that the highest ISO film ever created was Polaroid 612 with an ISO of 20,000. 
not used for taking photographs, but actually for capturing measurements from oscilloscopes, which move very, very fast, thus the high sensitivity. That is still a ridiculously high number, and please be sure to rate that fun fact in the comments below. Also, feel free to comment with any science questions you may have or any type of content you would like to see on this channel. Thanks again for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, have a lot of fun experimenting with film or just learning about it. Follow me on Instagram and keep it sciencey.